working today. So luckily we had a little setup that the previous owner left on the boat. And it's a cool little pump. Or... Right there. So that's just sitting in there right now. This cable just goes to a little direct connect to the battery system right here. Just some alligator clips on those posts. And just draining into this bucket. It's going pretty slow, but at least it's electric, so I'm just kind of sitting here hanging out. And they have this little tiny hose going into this pump, so you can only get so much out of that anyways. And that just feeds into... That little port there, which is kind of the lowest part of the oil pan, so I figure that's the best spot to do. It could also probably fit down the dipstick area too, but yeah, that's the low part. So we should be able to get all that old oil out of there and refill her up with some clean stuff. And we'll be out of here in uh, about a week now. Can't wait. Well, we got pumped out of there and I showed you the pump already. Actually, I didn't show you the pump. Oh, that's hot. And it took a really long time too. That pump is not great, but it is a cool little system we got here to where this line fits down that little hole perfectly. Any other, any bigger and it wouldn't fit, so that's cool. Can everyone do this on their Perkins? Everyone can do this on their Perkins. Here's the hole that it comes out of. So I'm going to close this door, I'm going to go on this side. That little plug down there, it's a little kind of nut kind of cap nut that goes over a little threaded section there and then that goes down into the very bottom of the oil pan because this engine is tilted up a little bit that works perfect right there this is the dipstick right here so you check your oil levels there and so I just shove this little hose down into there you get it to the very Can bottom. Can you move that hose? This hose that's connected to the pump mm -hmm. and then it pumps out into this five gallon bucket and then these Perkins take eight liters exactly supposedly according to the internet and these are 3.78 liters so with a little bit of spillage <laughs> you get about half a liter that you need so I just poured out exactly half a liter into this little epoxy mixing cup because it's got the measurements on it did both those full full to 500 milliliters which is half a liter and dumped it in there and we are good to go I also I just replaced this oil filter um, because we had a little bit high oil pressure not sure if I'm going to replace it again. What do you think? No, because you just replace did it. Replace it because it just had old oil going through it. No, no crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Changing more oil. I don't know if this is accurate, but it says 90 weight change, two quarts. December 2010. That's a long time ago, baby. <laughs> you have to. Have... But they might have changed it and not updated the signage too. Hopefully, because yeah, the windlass has been working great. So the theory is, take that nut off, and it's all gonna fall out from there. Into that bucket. That doesn't look very good. It's not all bad, I guess. Why would you why do you say it's bad? Oh, when it's brown, usually that means there's water in it. Like you see that kind of lighter color on it. Water got in there. This is supposed to be black. Yeah. Well, it should be black or like clear, like caramel colored, but not like milky around like that. Will you grab me some paper towels? Mm -hmm. Ooh, there we go. 
Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just repeating what Connor says. Something as exciting is happening. Well, it was just dripping out very slowly, so I took this plug out, which I believe to be the fill level plug. So once we are done draining, we'll close up the bottom plug and then pour in the new oil from here. Oh, that's getting and full in there too. By huh? releasing that, we released the vacuum so it, it drained out way faster. Mm. And this will just be 90 is our bucket big enough? oil in here. The bucket is plenty big. Okay, good. <laughs> we got a couple more to do though. We're going to do the outboard, lower end, and top end oil change on that just because I bought it a while ago and haven't done that. And who knows when they did it last, so always good to start um, fresh. Both outboards? The outboard that we just bought was just serviced. Like it hasn't <laughs> even run since that, so we know that's fresh. The generator is clearly marked when it was last done, so we're going to leave that until we get to the next hundred hours. And then um, everything else will know that we did it on the you know, week that we left, so that's an easy picture. Just bumping away. <laughs> so this is how I'm filling it up the uh, windless little gearbox here. Is I got this little gear lube pump. It's actually meant for outboard motors, um, but it turns out it fit perfectly in here. Well, not perfectly. The thread's a tiny bit off, but it's enough to shove it in there. And uh, Basically, you know, the other way would be to try and squirt the oil in through the top into there. But once you get halfway through the bottle, then that doesn't work anymore. Because you would have to tilt it up higher than, you know, you can get it that way. So this little pump here works great. Takes a little while, but pretty good. We are exactly one week from departure, and it's about... Dang time to go because look at this, I'm wearing a puffy and the sun's out and okay, it's not that cold, it's not but that it's not that bad, but we just got a new outboard. So we're gonna test it right now, it's important and I'm expecting to go very fast. So I'm dressing like I'm going skiing. <laughs> Here we go. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so you're skiing it's apparel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happened there? I put my through it. big of a hole this morning. He really didn't want me to wear them again. He was like, we're just gonna really ruin these so Maldino will never want to wear them. <laughs> a boat I'm sure you may have heard it if you've seen the news marina in marina del rey a boat caught on fire it was a father with I believe two of his sons on board and there was ammunition and fireworks on board and it just started exploding <laughs> And here's what's left to it. So that's where the fuel dock is. And then check that out. That is where the boat is. How scary, how close was it to the fuel dock? That, They're floating it back up though, huh? That is nuts. Such a devastating occurrence, but thankfully no one was hurt. I've been parked next to this huge super yacht right here. Thankfully, I don't, doesn't seem like they got damaged in any way, but once again, fuel dock is right there. If there was any ammunition or fireworks that sparked and got the fuel dock, that could have been a big, big problem. So with one week left, we have all the feels happening right now. We are both pacing around the boat, I think with a lot of emotions. I think Malvina has started stress eating. <laughs> Can we go to Trader Joe's? <laughs> But at the same time, we're super excited. We're ready to get out of here. Connor's birthday is on October 24th. <laughs> I always think it's the 25th. It's the 24th. So we're going to have ourselves a jolly good old time in our old stomping grounds in Oceanside. And then we will continue cruising on south to Mexico. 
All right, let's test out this dinghy. I can tell Connor's very excited. Woo! Oh my God. Holy <laughs> taking these walks almost every morning and evening and I can't believe that it's coming to an end it's been a long long awaited time to do this so it's a dream we both had and I cannot believe it's about to happen although I feel like we've been here and just delaying and it is so the time I feel like so many people are probably like they're not gonna go seven months seven months we originally prepped for three. It was gonna, we thought it was gonna take three months to get this boat ready and get out of here. We may have overdone it. <laughs> Wait, let me rephrase it. We have definitely overdone it, but it is time. Well, torn up pants, I think not. <laughs> so you guys, we went on nice a dinghy ride. Shot. You saw the air conditioning. Now let's check out what happened post dinghy ride. Even more air conditioning. <laughs> Still got the loop for my hammer. Still got the pockets for my flyers. And what do we think, guys? <laughs> are you gonna keep All them? All the kids are gonna be rocking these soon. Are you gonna keep Look them? Look at that tail. I like it. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like we're gonna fly away. <laughs> Leave your guys' comments. Should we keep the shorts or are should we throw them overboard? Are they minor? <laughs> Connor. Who wore him better? Okay, I'll put them on next. <laughs> Fashion show part two. Women's edition. How do they look? Oh, oh excuse me, XYZ. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look through it here. But yeah, I got a flappy bucket. I got a thing for a hammer. Now I just got to buy a hammer. I think I need the overalls. What are they called? We could trim them shorter for you, too. Oh, suspenders. I need some suspenders. I have suspenders. You do? They'll cut I'll off the pocket. Days. You told me you are going to cut me some Daisy Dukes, baby. Those are Daisy Dukes. I think you can't see any Daisy Dukes. <laughs> <laughs> I found a new hat. She's got a new hat. You can sail with it. <laughs> Connor, are you almost done cleaning up out here? I thought you were cleaning up. What are you doing? I'm going to clean up the bottom of the ocean now. Why? I uh, unfortunately dropped a little quarter inch uh, Allen wrench down there today, so I'm gonna see if I can get lucky and find it with the magnet. Can you try to find my AirPod too? See what we can pull up today. Uh, he feels something. I felt a bite. <laughs> no. Nothing. Top of the morning to everyone. Connor just made me some fancy coffee and just looking at our list and it's getting exciting because we're checking off. We're picking up the diesel pump today. Connor finished up the solar wiring. He taught me how to do an oil change and today he, we are picking up parts for the seawater pump. Check the check check boom boom list is done. When I was initially setting up this bilge pump for the water maker, I kind of messed around with it and made this little contraption to reduce it down to a one inch hose so that the uh, automatic bilge pump would fit onto this vented loop and then down into our through hole here and ended up reusing all this kind of whatever cuff hose, right? And then yeah, kind of adapted it all to that. So I'm going to redo it now and we'll show you what it looks like in the end. All right, there we go. Looking a lot cleaner and a little more secure. Oop, not that secure. I got to tighten up those hose clamps, but it's looking good. And that's where my little brine 
is teed in. I did it after the vented loop, so it's gonna go straight down. Otherwise, if I did it before the vented loop, it would drain into the bilge. So we don't want that, so it is after the vented loop, but there's not gonna be any suction going back to the water maker panel. So we should be fine with that. And that level is just a little bit lower than where the water maker panel is gonna be mounted in there. So technically it shouldn't have any uh, need for, for pushing or pumping uh, to get rid of that brine water. So that just really makes me happy to get rid of these crappy hoses. I don't know who ever came up with these, but you know, while we're healed over, that is under the water line. And these things just kind of twist off. They're not, I mean, I guess you're supposed to glue them on, but even then, I'd rather it be a solid hose with a hose clamp around it, not just some weird plastic thread on another weird plastic thread. Not very secure, in my opinion. So happy to get rid of these stinky old things. Connor, how does it feel? You just sold your van. I felt really weird. I didn't like it. I really like having a van. <laughs> it's really nice to be able to just keep all my tools and all the extra stuff from projects on the boat. And now I got nothing. Now everything has to be on the boat, which means I have to stay more organized. And I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> but we, uh, yeah, feels good. And that's one step in the right direction. We and we're just trying to finish up a few last projects and adding a couple more, you know. The years. The years. <laughs> what, what do you guys expect, you know? So what are you um, working on now? So now I am trying to thread this new outhaul. We got this nice Seahawks color outhaul for Malvina <laughs> at Minnie's today. Uh, we got shirts <laughs> from Minnie's. <laughs> Schooner or later? You like that? Looking pretty good. <laughs> oh, she even looks good when she falls. And <laughs> moving now, on. This is Kevlar core stuff. So I might show you guys how I cut this. I don't know. I've never cut this before. So we'll set it up. I'm just going to use the same old hot knife, little butane powered hot knife. Kevlar is bulletproof. Let's see if it's heat proof. It's pretty heat proof. It's not cutting easy, guys. What do we do? All right, we just took a little break to go find some better cutting tools. And I also watched a YouTube. And I guess with the Kevlar core, it is known that they do not cut very well with heat. And so how do you seal it? Well, a little bit of super glue. I got these tiny little things of super glue which are really cool because it's just one time use which super glue things always tend to be anyways because it dries up too well so we're just gonna cut a new end on it this guy said to tape it first that'll kind of allow for a spot for the super glue to all uh, kind of sink into so pretty clean I like it Top of the morning to you, Connor. <laughs> Top of the morning to you. We've got a new little addition for the boat. We got this a while ago from Garhauer, but we didn't have the snap shackles and I really wanted to do it with snap shackles. Instead of going through the old block on the rigid boom bang here, I just wanted to, because that limits us to either using wire rope or some quarter inch line or whatever for that, we ended up just having a full external setup to support this. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Thanks, Garhauer. <laughs> <laughs> so the cool thing about this little setup that I think is cool, and I haven't really seen much on other boats, but we can use this as regular traditional boom bang 
or also as a preventer if we come down to this right here and then that'll keep when we're sailing downwind that'll keep the boom from kind of slamming back at us when we're in light winds picture the boom over here and tightened up and that'll keep the tension on the uh, boom and and keep it from swinging back all at the same time so. yeah because we know the boom goes boom but sometimes when we're going downwind it slaps it so hard that it it always sounds like it's about to break off so yeah, yeah this will be good kind of suspension for it right mm -hmm. Yay! Look at that! This is so exciting! Last little few additions before we take off. And now we're just trying to tune the rig too. So we are hanging this weight from the main halyard and trying to get it to be... I've uh, watched a few YouTubes and read a little bit and it seems to be that that weight should be hanging the same as the mast width here back from here we are kind of maxed out here and it's hanging maybe two masts back instead so we're gonna keep going and try to get it all set like that everything is coming together even though it may still look out of sorts we are just about at the finish line another foggy moody day we still have to get these gas cans and diesel tanks external tanks mounted a little bit better and more secure because they're just <laughs> obviously just blowing in the wind up here right now you know still a few things to do we got to get the dinghy on deck Got a few checklists to go through before I take off. We are still freaking out. Five day countdown before we leave. Final, the final. Sing it again. The final countdown. Okay. So we are 21. We were 21, 21 on the other side. 21 and 7 sixteenths on this one. So we are off. We need hmm. to tighten this one. But I kind of thought we were bending to the right, which would mean that this one would be tighter. Hmm, looks can be deceiving, babe. Hmm. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> so what are you planning on doing here? You're just going to tighten this one to match with the port side? Yeah, we're going to get this to 21 and 8th. And then we will step back and look at it, make sure everything looks good. And then if it all looks good and we're at the right matching distance, then once we determine that is good, then we'll hook up the tension gauge on this side. And then we can just go back and forth and try and match the turns, right? As long as you only do two turns on this side and two turns on that side, then theoretically it should all still be the same uh, length, equal tension mm -hmm. and match lengths and everything. But yeah, that's cool. It. Love it. Something about a man just putting his uniform <laughs> on, getting all his tools in his tool belt, it just yeah. hits a little different, huh, ladies? <laughs> Can I get a yeah <laughs> in the comments below? <laughs> Doesn't help when he leaves these down here, though, huh? No, hard to use them. Go check this out. We should get sponsored by these guys. I found them on Instagram. Holstery, I believe, something like that. And, uh, wow. So cool. It's actually super strong. It'll hold a hammer or anything. Used it all the time on my tool belt for, for work, but now I'm like, oh, that's super handy to be able to slap it right there while I'm at the mast, too. What was the brand? 
his holstery. Holstery. If that falls, if any of his tools fall on my head, I'm blaming you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's mandatory. When he's up there, instead of cranking your neck looking up, hang down here. You know, you gotta stay busy. Instead of hurting your cervical spine. And instead of just laying like this and watching him, you might as well just do some core, do a little bit of exercising. You know, still spotting him, but at least not wasting any time. Just installed the new washdown pump. Our old one was burned out, I guess, after I kind of wired it up. I found that out. Hadn't been running for a while, well, since we bought the boat. And uh, now I am hooking this up. I put this on a household switch. Don't talk. That's <laughs> just what we're doing now. Look at that. I'm tired of marine switches. They're not even cool. What's up? You want me to test it? Yeah. The Malvina is up here. He's a working. <laughs> Don't do that. That's seawater. Alright. Looks like pretty good power. Alright. We got a win for the day. Alright. Well, the water maker is finally fully installed. We haven't actually tested it yet. Tested for leaks. But we have it all piped in and ready to go. So here's a little tour of the setup. This is our raw water in. Little sea strainer. And then we have all these valves set up so we can use. This one is to our low pressure for the water maker. That feeds in to the pump here. And then goes to the high pressure or no, that one feeds actually. <laughs> Where the hell does that one feed? <laughs> okay, I found it. That one feeds into this little check valve here, which then goes through this hose and wraps around and comes back into our 20 micron and then the 5 micron filter here and from there that tees off to a little pressure gauge this goes up to the panel and then this also comes back into the high pressure pump here and then from the high pressure pump out goes into the membrane we have our membranes down here so it loops in through this one and then out through that one and then up into our panel panel is right here and i have it on a dedicated gfi protected circuit so i can kind of switch it on and off just by hitting the reset button but i do have it hardwired in and then we have our breakers here and the whole little seawater pro panel the one thing I don't really like about this panel is you have a pressure regulator here for the low pressure pump and that just comes as kind of a wire hanging and no spot to put it in the panel. It would be a lot better if it went into the panel so we could just have that as a little dial there. And I'm sure there's a way of doing that but I just zip tied it for now. That should be fine. And everything's all running down there and we're good to go. Pretty happy with how that turned out. All right, we have sailed away on the maiden voyage. <laughs> <laughs> and we got some kidnapped people here too. <laughs> some stowaways. Yes. <laughs> Help. 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 Picked him up on uh, Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. It is Sunday and we are departing on Wednesday. And what better way to say, Beep! Off to all the projects. <laughs> <laughs> We're done with you projects. We threw up all, all the projects in the V-Birth and we decided to get the sails up, dust them off, and go 
go for a little cruise. How do you feel, Connor? With uh, less than four days now before we have to for real leave. Feeling surprisingly good. I think we got everything pretty much wrapped up. We still got a few little messes to clean up and uh, one or two more projects to finish, but I think we'll we'll be we'll be good. Yeah, it definitely. Yeah. Once we were leaving today, we both felt like. Very, way more confident than I think we've ever felt on a live mm -hmm. We have her van for one more day now, so we have to kind of figure out anything we need to drive for and do that tomorrow. And <laughs> it's our last day, we have a Costco mission. We went into Costco on a Sunday. That was the worst to ever do. We pulled into the parking lot and both of us said, oh, nope. <laughs> nope, we didn't even get halfway through the parking lot. Yeah, we turned around, went right out. We picked up our scuba tanks. We are now ready to scuba duba uh -huh. and ready to sail away. Wednesday, here we come. Catalina, right back to where it all began. <laughs> We're not going far. We're not going very far, <laughs> but check it out. Sails are open and it's about time to put them to the test. True test. Oh, have we inspected the head sail? After the repair? Oh yeah, go show them. Go show them. Hard to see. I'm gonna see if I can point it out on camera. It's gonna be somewhere right there. We had a rip and that got fixed. The UV, yeah, Renata, that is your little, uh, we're gonna have to put your initials up there. <laughs> and he said our sale's in good condition, ready to rock and roll. She looks good all filled up. Bow side chats with Malvina about the feelings that kind of go through your body when you're about to take a big step into the unknown. And here we are just days away from actually pulling out and it feels good to feel good because Connor and I have been very stressed. It's a big ordeal. And just like if you're moving, starting a new job, moving to a new city, or just any life change. It can be so scary to really think about what's next and how your life's gonna look like, how it's gonna feel. We have created a very safe little bubble in Marina Del Rey, creating new habits and ways of living on the dock. And now it's that transition to unplug from water and power and fully rely on ourselves and a live -o. So it's a lot. And I think it would feel strange if we weren't scared, if we didn't have some fear. When you have fear, it's a realization that you're doing the right thing, that you're going towards a dream that is out of your comfort zone. So you should feel uncomfortable. And we definitely feel that. But as with anything, when you first begin, things can feel very uncomfortable, but the more you continue on and keep practicing and keep going for it, you start becoming second nature. So for all my friends out there that are trying something new, maybe you're picking up a new habit or a new hobby, it doesn't have to be a ginormous, huge life change. Just stick with it and keep believing in yourself that you can do hard things. Love y'all. Have a great day. <laughs>
Aye, aye, Captain. Get to work. <laughs> we made it. Yeah, this is our last time probably ever pulling into this slip. I'm sorry, LA, but we are not LA people. Marina Del Rey is beautiful. I could see us staying longer, but we got bigger plans. We are not coming back here, but it is gorgeous. We have loved every moment of this. Three months has turned into seven months, and that's fine, but it's time. Thanks for watching everyone. We have one more video to share with the true last days before we leave, selling our cars and finally untying from the dock. And then we will share how our first week on our maiden voyage is going. Meaning we're on a libo, not in this slip. We're parked <laughs> for the night. We have arrived. Look at that beautiful sunset. Today was the most gorgeous day to go out. Yay! Marina Del Rey, you were good to us. Peace out. Um, and, um, uh, and, um, 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 and, uh, um, 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 uh, uh, the, uh,